All right, we are interrupting that news story to bring you this breaking news. A high-speed pursuit underway in the Southgate area. Stu Mandel up in Sky Fox. Looks like it's slowed down. Oh, the bumper itself. No, 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 yeah. no Marley. This thing has not slowed okay. down at all. That plate on that vehicle is a cold plate, meaning it comes back to a, an Audi that clearly not this vehicle. Now, this started probably a good 30 minutes ago, maybe more. We were uh, we were being respectful following that uh, procession for the law and fall, uh, fallen law enforcement. This started up in the LAPD area. This, the vehicle was moving extremely fast. The LAPD was chasing it, but it would, got onto the freeway relatively quickly, and that was one of the reasons why law enforcement stayed with this car. It, so, it, But at one point, got off the freeway, South LA area, and this high speeds, too many close calls, they backed off. Everybody backed off. And it actually, the other, other LAPD units saw this car speeding, tried to stop, and not aware that this was a vehicle from an earlier pursuit, and it, it continually, law enforcement saying, do not not chase this vehicle, just too dangerous. Well, in the end, law enforcement, LAPD, stayed above it. Now you can see why they were backing off. That bumper hanging off, I wish I knew the reason why. I'm gonna take a look and see if we get some information from some of our friends uh, down on the ground. But, but, but you can see right there, this vehicle still moving very, very quickly. Now off on Garfield, very fast. It's a newer BMW, so you know this car's got some power and it basically has been eluding law enforcement. Now, Sheriff's Department, that's where we are right now. This would be the area that would be chasing it, but because of these high speeds and because of the danger to the public, they basically decided to back off. And Marla, this kind of, you know, this is one of those things where us in the media, we follow these things, we see what's going on, but the reality is, is this person is running from nobody, running from his own demons, as it would be, because these high speeds are not warranted. There, he might know that there's a helicopter above him. He might know that something's going on. But of course, he does not see anybody on the ground. You can see he's making his way a little bit farther away from us. Our pilot today, Adam and Vinny on the camera, we're going to keep an eye on it. We're going to try to listen in. But you can see what law enforcement is dealing with today. Yeah, so even though the ground units have backed off, this guy is keeping his foot on the pedal, blowing through these intersections. Uh, high traffic volume on these surface streets now in the Downey Norwalk area. So now we're getting on a freeway perhaps here, Stu? It looks like he's getting on a freeway. He was paralleling a lot of them. It definitely making it a way, way onto the freeway right now. I was just talking to Adam to make sure that he actually had the vehicle there on the ground. So what we saw earlier on on the freeway is you think he was going fast on the street? Wait till he actually gets onto the freeway. Marla, this is one of those ones really, truly, looks like he just got on and then off, uh, <laughs> off and then back onto the freeway. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Onto the freeway, then back off of the freeway. So we're right here at Somerset. But this is one of those ones where you just got to think to yourself, you know, you know, I never would double, you know, I would never second guess the uh, any kind of law enforcement. And we just watch up here in the media, and we just, uh, you know, just a guy in a helicopter calling a pursuit. But any kind of law enforcement, and we just watch up here in the media, and we just, uh, you know, just a guy in a helicopter calling a pursuit. But this is one of the ones where this person clearly is continuing to be a danger to the public. And then the the next question would be, well, Stu, if you were law enforcement, how would you stop it? Well, I, you know, there's no way to actually do a pit maneuver there's no way to get some you know spike strips in front of this guy especially at these high speeds and very random pattern out here just to make sure that you guys know where we are right now we're going to be on the uh, 105 freeway we're going to be coming up onto the um the 605 here in just a moment. We'll see which direction he goes. But this is one of those ones where you just got to kind of wonder how are they going to stop it, even if they did get involved. The, clearly, the backing off didn't slow this guy down. Clearly, the backing off didn't slow, it didn't make this driver less reckless. So it, it is one of those ones where at least if there was law enforcement trailing, there would be lights and sirens. There'd be a little bit of acknowledgement to the uh, to the public at large. And again, the definitely not criticizing anybody uh, on their decision-making process, but watch this guy. He just basically was riding that center lane there on the HOV, almost swapping paint with two other vehicles. Clearly doesn't have any regard for that vehicle and or anybody else's life as he's working his way probably up to 120 miles an hour. That's what our, our speedometer is saying right now. And it looks like we're gonna either be getting off the freeway right now or we're gonna be taking a southbound transition or 
We're going to stay on the freeway and take, uh, excuse me, we are going to be taking the southbound transition, it looks like. But th this type of speeds, these type of rec this type of recklessness, it makes me, you know, it makes me realize I'm, I'm happy I'm the reporter and not have to make a decision on how they're going to stop this thing. Well, and then it also makes you grateful that you're, uh, or makes you feel for these unsuspecting drivers oh. in the area. No, oh, definitely, and, and you, you know it, it is the truth. We watch these things all the time. I've mentioned it before. It's not, it's not drama. It's not the, you know, you know, I'm not trying to play up the situation. When these cars at these high speeds, even right here, you're just going, uh, duh, 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 you know, it, it's like you just don't want to see anybody get hurt, and he's so, moving so quickly. Uh, it is a BMW. It is a more of a performance vehicle, but being driven this hard, that fast, for so long, uh, you know, things get hot. Things start to wear out. The driver's probably going to start being becoming fatigued, uh, and, and that just creates, it, everything just builds onto the danger. On, uh, everything builds onto the next thing. And when you see these cars moving so quickly, and in, in, in total disregard, running every red light, going through every stop sign, uh, cutting people off right and left, it, it's a miracle that there hasn't been any injuries so far. We watch these things, we're always hopeful that nobody gets injured, and we just want to see that guy go, you know, get those cuffs, get those silver bracelets, and that's the end of it. But right now, we're, uh, you can see we're on Rosecrans, we're back into an area that is you know, a mixed area. There's a lot of commercial stuff out here, but there's a lot of residential as well, and more importantly, a lot more traffic. Yeah, and slower speeds as they turn onto Woodruff Avenue. Uh, the other thing is, we, we don't know how many people are inside this BMW obviously uh, at least one suspect uh, the car is impaired we don't know how Stu according to you we don't know why the bumper is hanging off of this newer BMW uh, we, That's right. we uh, go we, ahead we were open we were hoping that the assignment desk would uh, get that information for us and try to figure out how that happened. It wasn't like that in the beginning. It, it original, the original stop on that f car, the, it basically, as we understand it, uh, was some sort of traffic violation, and then it kind of bumped up, and then they realized those plates don't belong to that vehicle, and now there's information clearly that it is a stolen vehicle. Uh, so it, it's kind of been moving around or, on what the original want was, but it's very clear that uh, this vehicle moving very, very fast, this uh, this. Uh, afternoon and total disregard for anybody around them it's amazing that they, this vehicle hasn't gotten in clearly it might have because there's that bumper dragging off the back there but hasn't collided with any other uh, vehicles as so far this is what we're talking about right there luckily that light probably turned green you can see uh, another car making a left right there but uh, we are going to keep an eye on it the LAPD has two helicopters over it right now so they definitely want to do at least know where this thing ends and are, are basically working coordinating with whatever law enforcement in this case we're uh, going to be getting uh, working our way still in the sheriff's department area so they're definitely working with the sheriff's department I know that the uh, officer in that one of the helicopters was talking with California Highway Patrol earlier as well so they're trying to coordinate an effort uh, mm -hmm. at, at how they're going to uh, bring this you know how they're going to make that law enforcement appear when this vehicle comes to a stop hopefully it'll come to a stop under that because that driver chooses to and this vehicle doesn't collide with somebody innocent on the road Way. Yeah, let's hope so uh, as he ducks under uh, an overpass here. So, Stu, let's talk a little bit more about that. So the ground units have backed off because this has become obviously a public safety issue, number one, but they do have those airships up, so they are absolutely still tracking this stolen vehicle suspect. Well, definitely. They definitely are, are been tracking. They have been tracking, and they probably will continue to though this thing comes to an end. Uh, making a turn here, I, I thought that might have been an on-ramp, but it is not. Just giving everybody a heads up that uh, our bosses and the folks that are watching us at home, Sky Fox has been up for quite some time, and uh, we are probably going to be starting to need fuel here uh, in the next maybe 10 minutes or so. Just giving everybody a heads up on that. So now we are northbound 605 freeway. The speeds are definitely going to start pick, be picking up. We've seen this uh, pattern in the past you know I'm not uh, not a hundred percent sure on that but uh, a lot of these uh, BMWs they're limiter meaning that the car if it's factory and hasn't been tampered with probably limited at about 125 miles an hour so that's about as fast as that car is going to go right about the 120 mark that bumper just flapping in the wind right there just kind of wondering when that the last pieces are going to fall off but you can see right now he's really starting to push it again he's well into the triple digits weaving in and out of these uh, out of the the traffic 
traffic out there, and that's probably a lot of the, the biggest problem, uh, you know, that you, you know we don't want to see anything like that, but you're driving along on the freeway, Marla, or, mm -hmm. or one of your friends, and you just make a lane change, and you're not thinking that, you know, you look in the mirror, and you're not thinking that car's going 120 miles an hour coming up on me, and you, you think you're clear, you make that turn, and then it, it turns into a tragedy. Uh, this vehicle right now, weaving back and forth, it looks like we're going to be trying to get back off the freeway again, and, you know, I, I can't even really choose. A lot of times I say, you know, the freeway is probably safer because everybody's going the same direction, high speed, you know, at, at a speed. But this guy using every, you know, every chance he gets, squeezing between cars, it, it, freeway, roadway, this guy's a hazard. I just hope nobody gets hurt. Yeah, I hope so too, of course. So yeah, we've seen him maneuver his way, uh, blow past all these vehicles on the shoulder, weaving in and out of traffic, a speed is 120 miles per hour. We've seen that plenty of times already. So we picked this up on surface streets in the Southgate area. Now we're on the northbound 605 still uh, in the Whittier area. The uh, want we believe a stolen vehicle. This did come back as a stolen vehicle. It's a four door uh, BMW, obviously tinted windows, if I'm not mistaken. Stu? Definitely, definitely tinted windows, and it, it, I would venture to guess it's probably a seven series. It, it, if it's not a seven, it's clearly a five. But the, you know, these cars are extremely solid vehicles. They're they are performance vehicles, and it, it, he's clearly using every little bit of that car, even though it's not you know it, it's not his. He's driving it like he stole it, probably because he did. Uh, we also know that the license plate on that car comes back to an Audi, uh, so it, it, it's they call that. Car Hold plated, but uh, you can see that uh, vehicle really just kind of picking up speed northbound 605 freeway. Looking out the window, I can tell you he's going to be coming up on a lot of traffic up there, especially if he stays over there in the in uh, away from the number one lane. If he's more to the right that he stays, the more traffic there's going to be. So I'm guessing he's probably going to either either he's going to jump off the freeway or he's going to try to push his way through. But it's definitely starting to back up as we're making our way north out of the Whittier area. Uh, you know, here we go on the emergency lane but it also you know law enforcement following it everybody's kind of got eyes on it but how are you going to stop it marla i mean do you, I, honestly right. it's like i get asked that question all the time do you have any ideas how you're going to bring something like this to a stop right i mean it, it, it's usually the pit maneuver uh the spike strips but obviously he's going just way too fast the suspect is driving just way too fast for either of those to happen and uh th these roadways it, you put everybody else in danger so uh, you mentioned that he was approaching uh, heavy traffic and that's what we're there seeing here maneuvering off to the side to scoot by uh, yeah. this is the only thing that can slow this suspect down at this point northbound 605 uh, you mo you mentioned uh, uh, as we continue to watch him maneuver past the traffic here Stu cold plated explain yeah. that well, cold plate is basically that the license plate that's on that vehicle doesn't belong to that vehicle. Uh, also, if everybody was watching right now, some people might be saying, oh, the car is smoking. That's basically dust and debris that's in the emergency lane. And also another thing is like when, when I see pursuits like this one and they get under that emergency lane, I'm always kind of thinking to myself, you know, I, I hope he picks something up and just get, gets himself a flat tire just to bring this thing to an end. Mm -hmm. It looks like we're going to be getting off the freeway right here. There's going to be the 605. And it, just to make it real simple, Cold plated is the term that most law enforcement use for a, a license plate that does not belong to the vehicle. So the, basically they ran that plate. In this case, we actually heard some of that information, came back to an Audi. This is clearly a BMW. So that's so somebody had put the, a different license plate on this vehicle. Uh, right now, the, you know, the th other information tells the law enforcement that this is a stolen vehicle. Originally, how, they, how it came about that they wanted to pull it over, that's a tough one. I think it actually was some sort of traffic traffic violation, but we'll figure that all out later on. Right now, we're just keeping an eye on the on what's going on. Hopefully, nobody gets hurt, and maybe this vehicle will just come to a stop someplace. Or, you know what, Marla, even though it's a BMW, this guy's been pushing it hard, or her lady has been pushing it hard for quite some time. So possibly, the, we might just see this vehicle run out of gas. Yeah, and, and this, is, uh, this is unconfirmed, but you know we're wondering what happened, why this vehicle, why the bumper of this BMW is hanging yes. off of it. So earlier in the pursuit, unconfirmed that this suspect hit another vehicle. 
That's sad. Well, hopefully that other vehicle doesn't have have severe damage, and hopefully all, more than that, nobody has gotten hurt. It it probably was. The only reason I was kind of questioning it is because of where that damage was. That could have been some sort of uh, pit maneuver done by another agency. Like I said, we were listening to this early, oh, geez, earlier on, and, uh, you know, we wanted to go, but there was that, uh, we were covering the uh, fallen deputy story, so we, we did, you know, we all decided to stay at that deputy for the out of respect. But uh, clearly you can see that this continues to move. Look at this. This is the first time we've actually seen mm. that vehicle stop since we've been here. Mm. Um, don't know it, really that it's kind of interesting because it's he could have basically made a turn in either direction. But maybe he's, maybe, maybe he's starting to calm down a little bit. Maybe the adrenaline is wearing off because clearly there is no black and whites, there's no law enforcement on the ground following this vehicle. Uh, clearly a number of helicopters are, but uh, right now there's nobody down there. Does that, oh, that, this is the issue right here. There's it's a, a it's a cul-de-sac. Yeah. Yeah, so, but uh, I I'm, can't see it from my vantage point right now to see what's going on. I really have a feeling that there is no law enforcement that are co that's coming down the street. That would have been a good opportunity to block them in, mm -hmm. but uh, clearly that didn't happen right now. Right, so the units have backed off on the ground simply because it's become a public safety issue, this suspect driving way too fast. Uh, we are now in a residential area in Whittier, currently on uh, t is it Tomas Avenue or Tobias? Sorry, I, it's it's my distance oh, from, Tobias, from, Tobias. From, from the camera from the screen yeah. here is uh, quite a few feet. So, uh, so Tobias yeah. Avenue in Whittier. Um, we're talking about how we can bring this to an end. I mean, the ground units, they backed off. As just mentioned, we have the airships above tracking the suspect. Stolen vehicle suspect uh, could have been involved in an earlier accident uh, during this pursuit. We saw one of the airships uh, go underneath our Skyfox yep. shot there earlier. Yep. Uh, with those excessive speeds, a pit maneuver is not feasible, but they, they could use the spike strips uh, as well. Well, you know, well, that, that's the thing. A lot of times we'll watch these pursuits and these uh, they'll have a license plate and they'll know, okay, he lives at this address. The vehicle will make their way to that address then maybe do circles around there. And that's when the spike strip, there we go. Uh, maybe that's when the spike strips would co really come in handy. Um, but in this case, this vehicle has not traversed the same spot twice. It started up in up in the Rampart area, out by Boyle Heights, and made its way all the way down here to Whittier. Drove through it. Just drove through a a, a shopping center right there. Uh, the pit maneuver. We both know his driving is becoming a little bit more erratic. Uh, you know, it, we 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 both know that the pit maneuver. There's just not enough. Oh, look at this. He's going to park it. Well, almost, almost in the, perfect in the line. Or oh, maybe he's going to correct it right there. No, nope, no, nope, he's just decided to drive over the curb. That's uh, that's interesting. But at any rate, there we go. Um, uh, just just keeping it going right there. I don't know what that was all about. It was something interesting to see for sure. Uh, at any rate, back on the Woodier Boulevard and uh, just kind of moving along. Still, he's getting so close to so many of these other cars. It is a stolen vehicle. We heard that from earlier on. It, it's just uh, it's just sad to think that uh, this driver just really doesn't seem to care about what's going on around him. And also, it, it, it probably is the last thing, even on that driver's mind, is that he's probably putting himself in a lot of danger as well. Uh, running those, uh, running through those areas. There we go. That might be the first mm. of the law enforcement. Now, Whittier has their own PD, uh, their own police department, and they, like, again, we we assume that everybody's on that same page. They know that that vehicle is in the area. We'll see what happens right now, but that uh, cruiser definitely making a U-turn, making an effort to uh, get, to chase it. We're just kind of just watching this. He's driving extremely more reckless. Oh, yeah, on the other side, cross those double lines. Yeah, it is uh, nerve-wracking to watch him weave in and out of uh, this uh, Whittier Boulevard here in Whittier, of course. Uh, and, and Stu, it was, uh, it gave you a little bit of sigh of relief to see a, a black and white in our picture, but yep. we're unsure if Oh, definitely, if definitely they're, they're fell back, back behind it. Yeah. You know, even, even if that, even if that officer, oh, geez, here we go. Oh, oh 
Oh, uh, you know, even if that officer had the reaction time that we saw, I mean, right away, lights and sirens made that turn. There's a good possibility Whittier PD also being told, do not pursue this mm -hmm. vehicle. We heard it, uh, like I said, uh, wanted to wanted to get on this pursuit as soon as we heard it. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we heard law enforcement tell their officers several, several times, do not chase that vehicle. And then when everybody backed off, you know, somebody else saw this vehicle racing by. They got behind it, turned on their lights and sirens. Hey, we're in pursuit and they right away it was like no 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 back off and uh, that's what, what what's been going on pretty much this entire time uh, looks like we're making our way back into another shopping center I don't know if this person is trying to do one of these uh, you know bail into an area that's uh, that's populated to try to blend in but you can clearly see this is these are the things I really don't like when they get into no. these bigger parking lots you've got people that are just out there shopping uh, or doing whatever they they need to do and uh, you just don't expect a car to come barreling barreling through there. Uh, you know, everybody's asking me. I'll put it out on the air. I probably think because we have an airport nearby, I'm guessing that we probably have another 10 to 15 on station, meaning that we have another 10 to 15 minutes to show the, the our folks at home how long we can uh, how, uh, this this chase. But after that, if that BMW doesn't run out of fuel, we're going to have to definitely, up here in Sky Fox, we're definitely going to have to go get some fuel. Right, because earlier we were up and over the, uh, the procession for the LAPD, pardon me, the Los Los Angeles County yep. Sheriff's deputy tragically killed uh, on his motorcycle on duty this morning and that procession was headed to the coroner's office in Boyle Heights and we just lost the sky fox picture we're back oh, good, good. Uh, and so we were we were covering that for our viewers and then this was already underway so this has been going for some time and as you say it was really picked up near Boyle Heights Really? Yes, that's when we were down in the in the Lakewood area when this thing started, and uh, we we heard the uh, initial chase take place and made its way quickly out of the Boyle Heights area into the downtown Los Angeles area, and then onto a freeway, uh, and then into South South Los Angeles. Uh, this is one of the things I was going to kind of mention earlier on. Whittier has a lot of beautiful trees out here, and I'm just hoping that he doesn't get in, get his way into some of the some of these uh, streets out here. The tree lines just go for you know miles, literally blocks and blocks and blocks so anyways he's, he's staying he's staying in these neighborhoods out here and I can guarantee you I, I'll uh, honestly to anybody listening right now in meaning our bosses or people at home uh, Adam our pilot today keeping us safe believe me we have El Monte Airport very close by we're not gonna uh, we're definitely not gonna run the helicopter out of fuel but as soon as we have to go we definitely will do oh. oh that was close oh, near hello. Miss, near miss. Uh, hello, oh, right into uh, yeah right there and, uh, and this is this is one of those moments where you just kind of think, oh look at, look oh, at that! I wonder if that guy did it. that on purpose. Yeah. So, anyways, this is just, uh, it, and it must be so frustrating for law enforcement uh, to have that suspect like come up right up on oh. you like that, and then have your supervisors just say, "Yep, no, you can't, yeah, no, nope, 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 don't engage." Uh, so that, that it must be just, you know, they're, they're people just like you and I, and that you're basically you're telling them, "Don't do your job," and uh, it, it must be so tough for those guys and gals in law enforcement. Uh, right now, you can see we're in a very residential area out here, not too super familiar with Whittier, except that there's a lot of trees out here. And uh, you can see him kind of weaving weaving his way through there, some stop signs, and then back into that tree-lined area, which is uh, is always a, an issue. Uh, law enforcement definitely in the area. Uh, he, he haven't, I haven't seen him pop out, Vinny. I haven't seen him pop out yet. And then LA, uh, one of the, that black and white cruiser is right behind him. Mm -hmm. So I saw that. Yep. Yeah, there he goes. So let's see where he, okay, he, he went, he just, yeah, up the street. Uh, or not. Well, that, that he parked by a driveway stopped. down there, somewhere down there. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's the officer running. Okay. So, Vinny's gonna Vinny's gonna keep an eye on on that officer, see where he's going right there. But apparently the suspect is out of the vehicle and apparently is running. So I'm gonna get get on the uh, oh, get on some of the radios. The there push running. it down. Push it down. Push down. Push down. Uh, that could be we're the moving suspect. Sky, we, we're moving Sky Fox here to get that get that shot again with these trees. So uh, we're we're working to find him too, Marla. We definitely mm -hmm. are. Okay, so we're uh, on Greenleaf Avenue here in Whittier, uh, Tree Line Street. Plenty of uh, black and whites now stopped. We know that one officer was uh, got out of his vehicle and started chasing the suspect. We may have had eyes on him earlier. 
running from uh, police here? And is this Whittier police at this point? Stu's. Okay, yeah. So Stu is working to gather some new information. Uh, I'm sorry, Marlon. No, no, no. Everybody's, that's okay. That's okay. No, He's there's a lot the going trees, on up there. Uh, by the yeah, uh, right there. I believe there's some kind of pointy roof, so he might be under the trees there somewhere. Uh, I'm hoping that they're talking to Vinny right now, so we well, I can talk to you, Marla. But we saw them running, so this thing coming to an end. And then I also understand that perfect timing for Sky Fox for once in our lives, where we actually need to go get fuel like right now. And uh, clearly, this uh, person, in, uh, the suspect in custody, uh, somewhere underneath one of these tree lines. And it, in the end, I believe it was Whittier PD that finally uh, brought this all to an end. Are you? Let me ask you quickly, are you getting confirmation that the suspect has been taken into custody? I got that from our, uh, from our uh, management, that, uh, that he is uh, on the ground and being taken into custody. Okay, well, that's great news. Great news, this stolen vehicle suspect led authorities on quite uh, uh, the high-speed okay, pursuit. Okay, there he is, there he is yep. right there, being taken, there he is right there, being taken into custody off of Greenleaf. And Bailey, somebody actually shouted that out to us earlier on. There you go. All right, Greenleaf Avenue and Bailey Street in Whittier. This is where the, the, this high-speed pursuit of a stolen vehicle suspect has come to an end. Uh, we can tell you that it looked like at least one accident happened along the way. That's why the bumper was hanging off of that stolen BMW, the sedan. Uh, so we'll work to get more information about what happened along the way. But good news is that this suspect is now in custody, and we believe this is Whittier police out there. Uh, getting them into this uh, cruiser there. All right, Stu, um, I think we're going to let you go because you need to go fuel up. Uh, so thank you so much. Marla, always a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon.